My name is Graham Shearing, um, and I'm a friend of Ed. 1984, uh, the, yes, the ominous year, which is the title of George Orwell's dystopian novel, was momentous for Ed Everly, uh, signaling his withdrawal from an academic environment. Uh, he was teaching ceramics and drawing at Carnegie Mellon, University, but thereafter life was to be dominated by his studio practice. Uh, here in Pittsburgh, he has um, pursued his avocations in two enormous studios um, uh, since then. This is his first studio, and this is his second and his present studio in Homestead on the River Mon which I hope you will have all have had the time to visit, uh, which is set up like a disorderly conveyor belt or, or series of assembly points. There is a wheel, there are shelves with leather, pot, leather hard pots, um, a painting table set in the best light that the studio can afford, and in a separate space, the kiln room with more shelves of work waiting to be fired. After firing, Ed's work is set up in the gallery or in orderly stock rooms and thence to a wider world. But disorder, like shit, happens. <laughs> and the accidents of firing are also gathered up, seen as precious, uh, um, and incorporated into the assemblages for which he is also renowned. There are places in his main working space devoted to his slow and reflective activity. And also near to that is an area dominated by his easel and drawing tables where he practices his graphic art. Yet there is a total fusion here. Um, everything relates to each other there is a commonality of information. There are his theories here, deep reflections on philosophy, cosmography, psychology, and myth. In Ed's practice, these thoughts are occasionally transformed into tight crystalline poems, which he also writes. Uh, take Mythos Time here, 1994, which is a major piece uh, the tension and ingenuity of its structure is immediately apparent. It's painted terra sigillata, revealing that world of mythic symbolism that engages the viewer contemplatively. You can get lost here in the reverie, uh, or indeed in the poetry. On a smaller scale, the tension lift lifts a little, and a gentle humor can enter into. Uh, flying saucer, uh, Ed likes puns, fits into the hand. It is almost a throwaway little thing, but of infinite delicacy and delight. One of the shards um, from a fragmentary work I own, again hand size, is much treasured. Its title is Ancient Wizard, depicting a magician maker an alchemist, and it reminds me of Ed himself. He is surrounded by his stock in trade and is pouring out water, a symbolic life-giving material, pouring it into a jug. This was made in 1998, and I see it as an exceptionally personal work. Fast forward now uh, to the last work shown in his 2017 retrospective, shown here in Pittsburgh and in Philadelphia and in Houston. This is called Water, made in 2016, but it is really an installation. It's a massive drawing of the type found in his best work, uh, peopled with mythic makers, centered on a large group of individuals pouring water into a vessel or possibly that rare liquid called inspiration, which trickles into a white throne porcelain pot, 
standing in front of the drawing. If you view the work from the wrong point of view, instead of straight on, uh, the symbolism is entirely missed. But once you get to it, it goes to the heart of his, his entire work. So we are honored to have Ed Everly here this afternoon with his other inspiration, his wife Evie, to mark this occasion. <laughs> 